As I said, what's going on with shipping? We're looking at the port of Iskendron, day two of the earthquake and fire that has taken place in the port. So, excuse me, I'm on the road this week, be back uh, in North Carolina tomorrow, uh, tomorrow or later today, actually. And so I'll be able to do a better video, but this is kind of on the fly with my portable equipment. So I want to show you the latest drone footage that's out on Twitter showing you the fire that's taking place in the port. Now, as you know, Turkey, southeastern Turkey, northern Syria has been hit by a devastating earthquake. The city of Iskandran has been leveled. I mean, just flattened. And I'm focusing on the port here because this is a TV show or a YouTube channel about shipping. So I'm focusing on the shipping side. So this is the port of Iskandran right here. This is the container terminal. Now there's a container holding yard to the north, but this is the main receiving area for the container containers coming in. There are four large ship to shore cranes. You can see them here on the left. These are the blue and yellow cranes. They have all four of them have their booms list lifted and they are mounted here on tracks. And those are the cranes that are used to offload container ships. Most container ships do not have cranes to offload themselves. So you have to use these cranes to offload. You would then place the containers onto the ground underneath these, these ship to shore cranes and then carriers, little what they call bomb carts or little trucks would move the containers to the front of these four rows. There are four large rows of containers that run here parallel to the pier. And you can see down below here, these are straddle cranes. These are the cranes that pick up the containers and then place them somewhere in the stack. And so you'll have loaded and empty containers all in here at the same time. And then these move up and down the stack and they move containers like a big kind of like Jenga puzzle up and down. So what you've had is an earthquake that happened and a couple of things resulted here. Number one, we've seen the container stacks collapse. So where they had been stacked one on top of the other sitting on their corners, they've now collapsed. Not only have they collapsed, but th several things have happened. They've gone across the tracks for these carts to, for the, excuse me, for these, uh, uh, these traveling cranes to go up and down the stacks. So they can't move anymore. They can't go up and down the stacks anymore. Plus we don't even know if the port has power. So these units should have independent power for them. So they should be able to run, but they run on tracks. So the tracks may be damaged. We've seen pictures of the concrete buckled in the port. So there's no telling that these, these straddle cranes can even move. So you can't really move any containers out. Then when the containers collapsed, the internal compo uh, components of the containers all shifted. And the containers are designed to be fairly level. And what we've had resulted is a fire breakout. We saw the video yesterday, which showed the fire located right over here in the center part. But now it has moved. As a matter of fact, we're seeing it move southward toward the straddle cranes and encompassing more and more containers. Uh, initially, what we saw was some attempts at firefighting. There was a Coast Guard vessel and some tugs here spraying some water, but it was really not doing much because they couldn't get at the base of the fire. And some people have talked about, well, what can be done to this? Can we bring in aircraft, kind of like what you do with forest fires and drop retardant on it? You can. The problem is when you when you fight a forest fire, the, the fire is on the outside, it's exposed. This fire is inside these metal containers, a lot of it. And even if you dump, dump huge amounts of retardant on it, it's not going to do a lot, unfortunately. Plus, you would have to have the aircraft, the helicopters to do that everything right now is being devoted to humanitarian rescue operations. This is why we don't see fire trucks. This is why we don't see anything here. And I'm going to go ahead and let this run here for a second so that you can see what this looks like. And so you get a good, it's a brief video, only about 20 seconds, but you get a good circling of the area. You can see how the containers are just popping off one after the other, consuming. You can see that white smoke coming out here. Those are containers that are heating up this is the view from the west looking toward the city. The city is behind the black plume of smoke here. And so you get a, a kind of a full overview of the situation here as you kind of rotate around. The danger here, as I mentioned the other day, are these ship to shore cranes. You can't allow these ship to shore cranes to get damaged because without those, you can't offload container ships unless you bring in container ships with their own cranes. And there are fewer and fewer of those out there. What you're going to see happen here, unfortunately, is this entire stack is going to go. Uh, it's going to jump from box to box. It'll get those straddle cranes you see right here, the four of them right here. And then there'll be other straddle cranes here. Uh, you see some right there. You can see how the containers are piled out. The goal here, if you were fighting this fire and you had all the resources available, is you'd start pulling containers 
away from the stack. You try to make a fire break to prevent this fire from spreading anymore, but nothing seems to be moving. I mean, the entire video here, I don't see anything moving around this area. No containers are being moved. Uh, it, it, it's You would almost want to put a break in right here uh, between these ship to shore cranes, right behind the fire here. You'd want to go in with some container handlers, pick them up, make a fire break, and this way the fire can't jump, almost like you would do in a forest fire where you make a fire break. But again, uh, what you're going to see is, unfortunately, this fire is going to continue to spread and consume much of the containers here. You don't know what materials in here, hazardous material. Uh, some of these are empty containers, some will be full containers. But the danger here is it gets to the ship to shore cranes, and that could impact relief operations. If we can send help and help is available, one of the things I would send almost immediately is any vessel, Navy vessel, particularly a large amphibious vessel. If we had them into the port, uh, those ships have large pumps on board for their own firefighting. Uh, they can work in conjunction with shore-based firefighting equipment, set up fire monitors, start working at spraying that water to kind of prevent the spread down the stacks. You're not putting this fire out with this amount of heat. But what you can do is try to prevent that. You'll see right here, there's a little bit of a fire break. I'm going to go back here a second. See, there's one thing. Let me pause this for a second. You can see they've almost got a little bit of an area here where they can kind of make that break right here, where uh, just to the right of the fire here, they can get in here and maybe kind of segregate out. You see some of these containers being moved out. These are not normally stacked right here. So they seem to be attempting to create that break. The problem is it's going to have to be wide enough, big enough so that the heat doesn't jump because this thing will be radiating huge amounts of heat. Anyway, we just unfortunately don't know that much about what is going on with this. The information is obviously spotty and the focus here is saving people's lives. But the port becomes important for the days after, for getting relief in, getting supplies in. You've got to imagine roads and other ways of in and out of Iskendrin are going to be shattered, and the port's going to be the main entrance for coming into this area. This is a quick screen grab I did of marine traffic showing you the amount of traffic that's in the Gulf of Alexandretta. Down here at the bottom, these are all general cargo and container ships waiting to get into Iskendrin. Up here in the middle, you have bulk carriers that are coming in, uh, grain and ore coming in, and then tankers up here. So it's a busy little corner of the Mediterranean. Uh, this is a major port, Iskendrin, and it provides a lot of ingress into the area of northern Syria, southern Turkey. Uh, and the loss of this port will be significant for not just the city of Iskendrin, but for the entire region. So again, thoughts and prayers are with everybody in their uh, relief operations, and it's just a horrible event that has taken place. If you're new to the channel, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, so be alerted about new videos as they come out, and stay tuned to us as we'll give you more updates as we get them on the port of Iskendrin. This is Sal signing off.